Hey guys, it's me again, Missy. Welcome back to another Krita tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over another feature of Krita, which is similar to other programs as well, which is the palette. Basically making your own color folder to refer to specific colors repeatedly across whatever document you want, whatever file, without having to bring in a reference image to iDrop from or opening up another file to get that RGB or CMYK value. So to start off, I'm going to point out that the advanced color selector here in the right corner, or wherever you have it on your layout, it's really useful when you have all of these colors here on the right side, because every time you pick a new color to use, it shows up. However, when you're doing colors that are going to start blending and uh, from like the light to dark, it can be a little frustrating having to pick the right color again, like especially if two values are very close. And you can eye drop it, but if you're shading, you might eye drop like a pixel or just, just off the mark, and it might not be exact. And if you're really, really specific about the colors you're using, then you don't want to risk any error. So to avoid that, we're going to go to Settings, Dockers, and Palette right here. And this little docker comes up. Now this is the default color scheme or color palette that it's going to give you. It's very simple, very basic. That's great. Now if we choose the palette here from this little icon with three bars, we have other palettes we can choose from that are with created by default. We have a marker which has um, pretty nice values. The default, again the gradients, we can have gradients of numerous colors here pretty much all across the color wheel which is very very helpful and then there's a couple others that you can check out for yourself however that's not going to help us because we want to make our own so we're going to make a new one called tu well I'm going to call it tutorial color palette but you can call it whatever you want and for columns as you can see here it's just you can put as many columns as you want um, so I'm just going to keep it at 10 though and we're going to hit save so now that I scroll to the bottom, I have my tutorial color palette, but I don't have any colors in there yet. So we're going to go ahead and start adding those colors. So let's say I like this blue, it's, it's nice and pretty, pastel -y, whatever. I want to add that. But to do that, I want to click this plus icon. Group is default. The idea, I'm going to leave it at, at one, but if you have a specific name, you can name it if you'd like. Uh, right here. And the color, so if I want to edit this color, like, yeah, I like that blue, but I want to make it a little bit darker, I can do that right before I save that color. And then spot, it's not a spot color, so I'm going to just hit OK. Now, it does take a, a minute for it to update, so just to make it go faster, I'm just going to switch to another palette and go back to my custom one I made. And there it is. Now that I have that color, I want to start adding a couple more. So I like this salmon color, so we'll add that. We'll add that one as well. So as you can see, I'm starting to add more of these colors. And I can always switch to another uh, palette and switch back to the custom one I made. So it seems to be a little buggy in the display, but it doesn't seem to be affecting anything else. And as long as it's showing up and it's being saved, that's all I care about right now. So if I want to make a group in here, I click that folder icon and I can name this color group. So if I want to say red group, I hit OK. So now I can add some colors to that group. So I can just hit red, add, and then I can pick red group. So it'll, all the reds that I add to that group are going to show up under here. Let's go, oh, if you want to delete the colors, click on the color you want to delete and hit this button here, which as you see, it says delete color. Now again, I'm going to switch, oh, oh, delete, it updated automatically, so that's good. Now if I go back and I want to save this, I can, or I want to import another resource, I can go to import resource and import a color, a color palette that someone else has made, or one that maybe I exported and I'm switching between different computers. If I want to delete that color palette, I just hit the trash can here. And that's pretty much it for the color palette. Very, very simple, but very useful. And I will be using that uh, once I start 
doing more finished colored work for my images, especially when you have like specific things for web layout or logo design or something like that. Very important to keep those colors consistent. You want to be even more specific with the colors that you're picking. If you're using uh, another program like Inkscape or Illustrator or something and you have those RGB values or anything like that, you can go to the specific color selector and start putting those in or use the hex code. And by doing so, then you can add that to your palette as well to save you some time and headaches. You don't have to be going back and forth between all these programs or looking at your notes or something. It's all right there for you. And that's it for the color palette in Krita. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, please let me know in the comments, like this video, and subscribe. My support links are in the description below. I will be coming out with a new video next week going over something just as simple and short. Hopefully these videos stay short going forward because I know they can get a little long. Again, thank you for your support and I will see you guys in the next video.